Okay, so in this last tutorial, what I'm going to cover is a little bit of kind of um, uh, photo photographing your models, your plaster casts, uh, editing them in Photoshop, and then putting together all the images we've created into a InDesign presentation and, uh, and exporting that. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, our photo documentation. So there is a separate tutorial on putting together this kind of tiling uh, collage. Uh, that's this part of the assignment right here uh, under under the photo documentation. So what I'm just going to talk about today is like the photos. So, you know, it'll be your job to kind of take good photos of the of the casting that you do. Um, and I would refer to this uh, set of guidelines here on page one of the assignment where it says, you know, to kind of emulate um, if you're using a studio environment, a direct and an indirect light source, or or just take it outside, right? Like use it, use the sun and the sky as your direct and indirect light source. Um, also use a simple backdrop. Um, I really want to emphasize this because the images I have, personally, I don't have any of these tiles with me that I can take good images, but I have some older ones, but I'm just going to, so my images don't have backdrops, but you definitely want to make sure you're putting Putting them in a back in an environment with a backdrop, you know, just use a piece of chipboard or something like that. That's not distracting us uh, from the tile itself. Um, so when you go outside, you know, use a couple pieces of chipboard or um, whatever you have handy uh, to kind of make a neutral background. And um, and then uh, so we're going to do kind of two scales. Uh, make sure you take photographs looking at the overall form of the tile and then some of the details, things like. Uh, the wax texture might get picked up in the cast or you know how the kind of resolution of the edges came out look at the kind of material um uh the the effects of uh of doing something with a real material uh, show up at a, at a very kind of close looking very closely at the object um and then the last thing is just be mindful of, of framing the images cropping the images overall composition light and dark etc and that's what i'm really going to talk about um uh, a little bit here really quick just to kind of wrap our heads around um, uh, you know what things uh, to be mindful of so and I'll talk a little bit about um, you know which photos to take as well so I'm going to go into Photoshop here and I'm just going to drag in some photos and these were just taken you know with my phone obviously you can see I don't have the background the neutral background um, these are pretty old photos at this point but Anyway, so one of the things, like I took this image, obviously this is only in indirect lighting. And, but I think it's still kind of useful. Like I, I was mindful of the time of day, you know, this is late afternoon. And so we're getting a little more temperature, color temperature. You can see there's sort of some yellows and uh, oranges showing up in the, in the light color um, that we're getting on the surface of the object. Um, so I'll talk more about actually cropping uh, this image. Um, <clears throat> when we get to uh, uh, when we get to um, InDesign, because we're going to do that there as part of our layout, you know, because we want it to be the same among several images. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to mess around in Photoshop and kind of get the balance of this image uh, a little bit better. So the first thing I like to do is throw it into black and white. Oops, that's the wrong. That is the wrong layer. So uh, to, to throw it into black and white, I use this, this little like uh, circle with the black and white in it. Um, this is all my adjustments that I can do in Photoshop. Obviously, you can also do them up here, image adjustments. Um, but uh, when I do it that way, it's kind of permanent. Like I, um, I've transformed the image. So what I want to do is do it in the layers here. And so I'm going to go to, um, where am I at, black and white. Uh, because black and white for me, I find it really useful, even when I'm not going to actually export an image to black and white, just to kind of get a sense of what the um, what the variation in in tone is. And so what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing um, we have a pretty good variation. We have light spots and darker spots, um, but I'm seeing kind of a lot of neutral, and I think that's partly because my background is so dark in some places. So what I'd like to do is bring out more contrast in the in the tile itself. Um, and so I'm going to go in here. And so all these brightness, contrast, levels, curves, exposure are all good tools for, um, for messing with contrast. And the one I actually like the most is, is brightness, contrast. Or, I'm sorry, <clears throat> exposure. And so exposure going up, obviously that 
is going to emulate like if we had taken a photograph with a higher exposure and then we can do this kind of offset to bring the 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 the, the dark tones down and so i'm looking like at my tile i just want to see like this part to start to get a little bit deeper and this part to start to get a little bit brighter but i'm just going to the limit where i'm not passing like here what happens is i start to get this whole area is just white and I can't read the definition of it, of that surface anymore, because we know it's a curvilinear kind of surface. And so I'm just going to the limits of that. And the same thing is true for the dark tones. Just going to the limits where, like, as soon as it starts to get really dark, I can't read um, what's going on in that image anymore. So I'm just kind of balancing it out like that. And then I could throw my, um, I could throw my black and white back on, and I could. Um, I could mess with the, if I wanted to uh, do in saturation. I'm actually going to really quick do something. I'm going to desaturate the background because I think that's really distracting us in terms of how this color re re is reading. So, like, I think it's nice to kind of pick up some of the colors that are going on, you know, in the tile itself that are coming from, like I said, like that late afternoon daylight. But this is really distracting for me, so I'm going to just desaturate real quick. And uh, I'm using my uh, image, uh, uh, my layer mask, and I'm using my paintbrush. And actually, what I want to do is I'm desaturating around. And you hopefully won't have to do this because you. took images with um, clean backgrounds that didn't have distracting colors in them. Anyway, so we're just going to kind of balance out the colors there. You could also, again, because you took an image with a background, you shouldn't have to deal with like the darkness and lightness of it too much. But anyway, so we can, we can kind of tune this back a little bit. I think it is a little too kind of crazy looking. And the other thing we can do obviously will be to go in here and, and grab our um, uh, color balance. And that kind of allows us to adjust the warmth of an image. So you can see when I'm dragging this slider around, it's kind of emphasizing certain. But I don't, what I don't want to lose is like, um, you know, the cooler temperature colors, like the blues. I don't want to lose those. Um, because that really, you know, that's really the, the color of, of indirect lighting. You know. Anyway, so I'm just trying to kind of emphasize some of the colors there. Okay. And so I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to save this uh, both as a PN, uh, sorry, PSD file, which is our Photoshop file, remember, that allows us to come back and edit this later if we want to. And I'm going to save it as a um, JPEG. And I'm not going to overwrite. Okay. So I would do that. And I'm going to do that again really quick with like one of these other guys. You know, so like here's an image where we're in direct light. Obviously, the angle of the light uh, that was taken with this image, we're not seeing you know, shadow lines compared to this image where we are seeing shadows. So it's casting a shadow on itself. I think it's probably good to capture it in both conditions, but again, just be mindful of the angle that the light is hitting the object and so on. Um, Cause that is like, that's really what the design of this thing is about, right? It's a modular tile that's meant to kind of uh, manipulate light a little bit. So this one's like a little dark to me. I would lighten it up a little. Um, but without, again, blowing anything out. This one is two. I would just, so mostly I'm just going for more contrast a lot of the time. Trying not to be distracted by my background. Okay, cool. And you can see, you know, even just with a little more contrast, all the color that's showing up as a result of our kind of natural lighting 
um, in our tile. Anyway, so I would save these guys out as well. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, save and move as JPEGs. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up my InDesign. So over in InDesign, we want to create a new document. Uh, I'm going to open it up, just go to Create New. And we want to be in inches here. And we want to actually, what we'll do is we'll go to uh, Print. All right, and then go to Inches. And we want to be at Tabloid. I don't know why my thing is set up weird. And I'm going uh, uh, Portrait, or sorry, Landscape Format. I can make a couple, it's not that, a couple pages. And then just click Create. So um, in here, you can see we have a bunch of pages laid out. What I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a master. So in my Pages panel, which I can get to by going to Window and Pages, up above, you can see we have what's called an A master. And if I look at each individual page, and actually when I hover my mouse over, you can see it says A master applied. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into my A master, and I'm going to actually like uh, add like things like my name and the course and the project, you know, project three, I'm going to add all that stuff on my master. That way it just gets automatically applied to my page. So if I double click up here where it says a master, so now I'm in the template basically, right? Now I should actually not have it in facing pages. I'm going to go to file document setup and I'm going to uncheck facing pages. This isn't a booklet, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to print it that way. So I'm just going to do one, and we'll see how this goes. So first thing I'll do is I'll just make a text box. I'm going to put my name. I can spell it properly. OK, and then I will also put class or 241, y, y, y. OK, and then and you can do this all in one box if you want to. OK, so that's our identifying information that we need to include on every page. I'm going to throw this stuff. I'm going to throw my name up at the top just outside the margin there. Uh, again, if we want to adjust like the text justification, I'm going to just going to click on that. And then I can see over here is a line. Um, options that I have. If I want to right or left justify, I actually have to go to the text tool with that box selected and then go right justify. Okay. So I'm also I'm lining it up with my existing. This doesn't have to be so huge. I can just kind of, I could have put these in the same box, whatever. OK, and uh, yeah, so the way I did that was there's this thing called uh, Smart Track, you guys are probably familiar with. It makes those kind of green guides show up, which is under, um, I believe it's under View, Grids and Guides, Snap to Guides, Smart Guides. So that'll help you like kind of snap to or line up between uh, between objects there. And then I'll make one more text box, and that's going to be my page number. I'm going to type in page space, and I'll go to lay, or I'll go to uh, type. While I'm still inside that text box, I'm going to go insert special character. And I think it's, yeah, markers. I'll go current page number. And so that creates like a variable. And basically, that means that whenever my master is applied, and I'll just do my justification here. I'm going to put this at the bottom right-hand corner of my page. So um, whenever my master is applied to a different page, it's going to pick up the page number based on the order of pages in the document. And it's going to put my page number there. So I don't have to like individually write them or change them every time I move my pages around. OK, and so to get back out, I'm just going to double click on my layout. And so it looks like I applied the master to the wrong side. So I'll just go ahead and select all this stuff, copy and paste. 
and do the same, put it, place it on this page. Okay, cool. Oh yeah, and then, you know, obviously we can change the font of this. I'm using something like Arial or Helvetica. Something kind of simple and clean. Um, so if we, yeah, we, in order to do that, I can just select them all at the same time, go to the text. I kind of like to use the light ones. I don't have a light one for this. I have a light one for this. Light. Okay, that's nice. Okay. And then now when I go back out, so this stuff has already been automatically applied and you can see the page number gets picked up. So you do it once and we're done. It's great. Okay, and then what we want to do is kind of lay out our um, uh, all the deliverables uh, within this document. And so you can do two separate documents or you can do one. They're both the same size. It doesn't matter too much. And I'm going to lay out my, um, my illustrator diagram that I exported. Uh, there is actually two uh, ways to do this. So when you place something in InDesign, it, 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 it gets linked. Uh, in other words, you're not actually putting the, you're not actually saving it in the InDesign file. Uh, so, for example, when I place this this uh, Illustrator diagram that I did in in, uh, in Illustrator, you'll see that in my links panel, and I'll center it on the page there. So, in my links panel, you'll see it show up there, right? Now, I actually placed the .ai file in here. Now, you could put a you can put a um, a PDF, you can put a JPEG, you can put, you know, whatever it is you have, you can place it in here. But uh, anytime I change my link, or if I move it, so I have it saved here in my, um, in this folder. And if I wanted to put it in the same folder where I'm doing my layout, and now you can see, let's see. Uh, it may take a minute for it to realize, but um, it, sh it will lose the file. So like if I tried to save it or something right now, it wouldn't know where to look for that file. And so what I can do is if I have links that are missing, and, and we'll see a little like uh, caution symbol show up here, what I can do is I can relink them in the links panel. Remember the links panel is under window links. And if I click on that link and I go to this guy, and then I can navigate to where I've saved, um, yeah, yeah, where I've saved that file is in here. Okay, and then it'll relink it and replace it, and we won't lose anything. Now I'm also going to get rid of. So yeah, uh, the other thing about putting images into um, into InDesign, which I'll do now with my some of my photos that I just edited. So when I click and drag something into, into InDesign, I'll see a little thumbnail of that image or whatever, that drawing, whatever it is. So I can click and it'll automatically place that image at the scale um, that the image is. And this is really useful if, you're, if you have a scale drawing that you've laid out in, in you know, exported from Rhino or laid out in, in Illustrator. Um, we don't want to change the scale when we put it into our presentation. So the best way to do that is just to bring it in and click sing a single time. It'll just come in at whatever scale. Now I can also click and drag. And you'll notice when you do that, it's constraining the proportions of my image, so it's not distorting it. Um, and so that is kind of a shortcut if we don't need to worry about scaling. We just want it to fit on the page. And then the other thing about InDesign is obviously there's a cropping boundary. So when I select an image once and move the boundary, I'm not resizing the image. I'm, I'm, I'm cropping it. I'm moving the boundary of where the image is cropped. And, um, and so uh, in order to resize the image and the cropping boundary at the same time, I can select it. And then I'm holding Control Shift on the keyboard. And then I'm clicking and dragging. And that moves the cropping boundary and the image at the same time. Now I can hold control and move them at the same time, but what'll happen is 
as you can see what I'm doing, I'm not constrained to proportions. So I'm stretching my image and that's, that's a no-no. We don't want to do that, but it's going to make it look stupid. So we always want to hold control shift when we change. Uh, we always want to hold shift, but control is the thing that'll make us be able to do both. And then if I double click inside, you can see now my window is, is um, my grips turn kind of orange. And so I'm moving the image and not the cropping boundary. And I can also hold alt to like mirror around the center point, whatever I'm doing. And if I have something scaled way out, I can double click on the grips to snap it in that direction. If I double clicked on the corner, it would snap to the corners. So let's say I want to snap it to the length, the lengthwise direction. That's how I would do that. So there's one image. Um, and uh, let's say we wanted to do it. So you might want to do this for your detail images, or maybe you want to put a couple of different images on the same page. How do we get them to kind of line up to each other? I would do the same thing with this. If I would just, if I just wanted to make this the same, I would just scale it like that. And then I'm using my cropping boundary. And then I'm going inside, scale the image, not the cropping boundary. Make them kind of similar in scale. And there's our layout. And then of course, if we go to view over print preview, we can get a sense of what that looks like full resolution. We can make sure it looks okay. I have my ruler turned on, which by the way, control R, what was the ruler? That's about full scale on my screen. Um, so that looks pretty good. And so we wanna make sure that we're centered to our page using our smart guides and that we're using, like we're lining up where we're cropping and that we're cropping them the same. So I don't have like, you know, one doing this and one doing that. And it's like whack, you know, it's like all laid out weird on the page. You don't want to do that. You want it to be nice and clean and presentable. Okay. And then real quick to show you uh, a shortcut if I select several images and bring them in at the same time, so I'm just dragging in like I selected, I'll show you how I do this. So I'll select three images using control on the keyboard. I'm dragging them all in at the same time. Now you can see there's, there's a little number where it says three on my cursor. So I can do one, two, three, or I can hold control and shift on the keyboard and I can lay out a bunch of images at the same time. And what's nice about that is it'll scale them all together and it'll line them up and so on and so forth. It'll only do a nine square grid. Um, so it'll do rows of three first and then, but we can also then crop them together. They're kind of a similar scale. Um, and then we can lay them out. The other thing you'll find really useful with this Let's say I have three images and I want them to be evenly spaced. On my, um, in my align uh, panel, which again, window, uh, it might be under like object and layout, align. That allows me to select multiple images and go in here and I'm going distribute. And I'm saying distribute horizontal centers. Oh, so I'm actually, okay. So there's two ways you can do that. I'm down here where it says align to. I'm on align to page. What I want to be on is align to selection, which I think is the default. So anyway, so let's say I want, you know, I know I want my images to kind of take up uh, this much of the page, however much of the page. Let's scale them up real quick. So, and I want them to be evenly spaced, evenly distributed. Now I'll go distribute and it'll like line them all up in a row with an even space between. We can also, I think, do like align margins. So I can align it to the page then. 
using my align, vertical align. If I align to vertical, or sorry, to my margins, distribute to vertical, and so on and so forth. So those tools will really help you kind of get things lined up nicely. Is that uh, okay? Yeah, but to snap to our center. Great. So that's how you kind of lay out images in a nice way. And again, you'd want to add in here on it, each page. You'd want to add a little title and say plaster casts. Um, and I would want to have this kind of be like a different, you know, scale. So I have some hierarchy to my text. Going light and I'm scaling up. And let's say I want to do that for every page. So I'm going to copy it by hitting control V. I can also go to edit copy. And I can go to this page and make sure I have it like highlighted in my, in my pages. And I can go to edit. Rather than just going paste, I'm going to go paste in place. And it's going to paste it in the exact same spot on every page. Um, and then I can just go in here and say um, generative diagram and rescale my uh, text box. This obviously need a crop. I don't need that showing up. I can crop it properly and then kind of line it up to my page. Okay, cool. And then the final ingredient, um, which will be our, our last two ingredients, I should say. I'll paste in place. This is going to be our um, photo, our tiling collage. Okay. I'll throw that guy in, the one we made in that other video. Center it. I'm going to give that one its own page. Okay. And then uh, my 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 son studies. And with that one, I would actually want to um, that one. I would actually want to like do big. Um, some annotation in here where I could go, uh, let's see, actually what I'll do is I'll copy this guy. And I'll go, I forget, we did like March, just say Equinox. March, September, those are our equinoxes. I'm going to uh, scale this down a bit because it's competing. And then on the image itself, I would go 10 a.m. Got to go light. And I'm lining that up to each one of my Shadows. Oh, so just like in Illustrator, you can click and drag while holding Alt. You see my cursor is toggling. And that allows me to copy something while I drag it. Uh, I think this is actually like 1230. Yeah. And then 330. I wrote 12 20. All right. We'd want to add the same over here. 
or consistent as possible. Okay, great. So I would throw that actually up at the top with my other, uh, with my Illustrator diagram. I'm just dragging it in the layout pages. Okay, so there's my documentation. So obviously I want to save the file as an InDesign. Um, and I can do that on my folder. And, uh, and then I also want to export it to PDF. So do not submit an InDesign file. It's not what we want. We want a PDF. We always want a PDF unless we somehow explicitly state otherwise. Um, so I would go file in order to get the PDF. We want to save the InDesign again because we'll be able to go back and edit it using that InDesign. Um, so if one of our links is messed up and we want to go back and change a photo or whatever, we can go back into this file and re-export a PDF. Um, but anyway, so from here, we're going to export, file export. You have two options. You have PDF interactive and PDF print. Interactive is for documents that might have, um, you know, videos or GIFs embedded in them. Obviously, that's not what we're doing. We just want print. And I'm going to go uh, my proper naming convention. Uh, and, uh, and go ahead and export. And then in here, so we should be able to just straight export it. Let's see how big that file comes out, though. Um, and if you find that your file, let's see. And up at the top here, it'll give you a little loading bar to tell you that it's still thinking about it or working on it. Uh, anyway, it should it should pop up in our window there soon. Um, we can also go uh, um, when we export uh, when we when we um, uh, get to this dialog this window, we can go to compression. If you're ending up with files that are really really big. And uh, like, for example, we have um, maybe some of our black and white photos are too big. They're making our final file size too big. And um, you'll notice on our assignment sheet, it'll say 15 megabytes maximum. And so for ending up with a file that's too big, what we want to do is go in here to compression. And I'm going to do the same for my monochrome images. I'm going to say anything above 300. And it should automatically, like, you know, kind of uh, change the resolution of my images down to a certain level when it exports to PDF. I'm not going to do it because it's still exporting, but um, and that's one way to get your file size to be smaller. Okay. And then when that uh, PDF is done exporting, and we open it up and just double check that everything is reading properly and so on and so forth. Um, okay, so that is going to be, uh, and that's the file that you'll submit. You can either do these two as a separate document and then photos as a, as a separate document, uh, or you can, um, uh, you can do them all in one as well. Um, and that's what you will submit at the end of this project. Um, all right, so I'm going to end this video.